keeps this thing on. Hi there, I'm Farmer Brad and on today's video I'm going to show you how to make an automatic chicken water bucket with a five gallon bucket and a Farmer Brad do it yourself kit. Now we'll winterize this setup by using a Farm Innovators heated element that's 250 watts and then during the winter time we'll just have to manually refill. So let me take you to our local tractor supply store where I got these items some items in order to make a five gallon heated chicken water that during the summertime you can hook it up to the garden hose and it refills automatically. Let's go get some items. So let me sh go over what I got at the store. A tractor supply five gallon bucket and lid. I got a hundred foot extension cord because where this chicken run is, is not close to power. So a uh, hundred feet extension cord and I got the outdoor kind. I also got the cord connector, which helps waterproof the connection between the heat element and the extension cord. If possible, uh, plug in the heated element without an extension cord, uh, but you don't always have electrical outlets uh, where, where you need them. My plan next year is to eventually trench a line here. Uh, so, Here's the Farmer Brad do-it-yourself kit. Let me show you what's included. This is available on farmerbrad.com and it's a great way if you have a container such as a five gallon bucket or a 50 gallon barrel and you wanna make your own automatic chicken water. Now the temperature recently uh, took, a, took a nose dive and we had a pretty decent snow cover uh, but it was the first snowfall of the year and I really wanted to get this set up because my chickens back here are needing water and I don't want to have to be breaking ice this winter. So what's included in the Farmer Brad automatic chicken water do-it-yourself kit is a blue tube a garden hose adapter that connects to the blue tube, a float valve, and four horizontal water nipples. Now the reason why you want to use the horizontal water nipples is it has a rubber gasket there and it keeps all the water inside the bucket. If I was to use a cup like this in the cold climate, this would freeze, crack, and leave a big mess. I also have uh, several cordless drills. What you'll need is a half inch and that's going to be for the float valve and then a 11 32nd or a 3 8 drill bit and that will be for the water nipples. So the first thing we'll do is we'll flip this bucket over and in this case, since we have uh, four water nipples, we can go ahead and place these around evenly. Now what I like to do, since the float will be here, is I like to offset these uh, 45 degrees. Now since I buy a lot of uh, horizontal water nipples, uh, they come with this adapter that you can put in the drill and it makes it a lot easier to uh, put these in. Uh, but uh, you can uh, hand turn them or uh, use pliers, uh, but they 
they uh, taper in or out so as you screw this in more it makes a better connection uh, you don't need to put Teflon tape on these but um, they, they work without Teflon tape they do have this rubber gasket there uh, but really that rubber gasket is not necessary uh, it just uh, creates some space in between the edge of this and the edge of the bucket so I have a sharpie here and what I'll do is I'll go ahead and make my marks along the top and I like using uh, relative measurements uh, so I try to find something that I have around the house uh, in this case uh, a quarter works great um, ideally you want the water nipples to be about an inch away from the bottom so here I have my quarter so I have a mark there. Now I'll put this quarter here. Just put a mark there. All the way around. I'm going to put my 1132nd drill bit in there. I'm going to switch it out and put this little adapter on there. Then you put uh, a little bit of pressure on it. Then as it gets snug, then you align it so that this longer part will be towards the bottom of the bucket. have it now what I like to do uh, so this is the half inch uh, drill bit and I'd say go about a half an inch down that made a nice hole there now with this float valve when I send these out I, I go ahead and uh, adjust the screw on here to get it in the right orientation. Uh, but if you don't, then you'll need a small Phillips screwdriver. Now the parts of this uh, it has a float. So during warm weather, water will come up to here. And if the float isn't pushed against that, it will allow more water into the bucket. Now there is this rubber gasket and there's a little notch on the top uh, that you get it lined with and so the rubber gasket goes inside then there's this harder plastic uh, that goes on the outside and then this threads onto there and you want to make sure that you get it really snug because if the float valve turns sideways, then it won't work. Okay, so we have the inside part of the float valve in place. Now the outside, uh, 
comes like this and if it doesn't have a black o-ring on there then you'll need to put teflon tape but when i ship these out if i see it like this i go ahead and put teflon tape on it and then you go ahead and carefully thread that in there making sure not to cross thread And then I typically have this pointing out to the side. And then you can just take this tube and push it in there and it works like a shark bite. And if you need to release it for some reason, you push in on there and then pull out. Once again, push on this sort of collar and you pull it out. The great thing about that is if you need uh, this t tubing to go through hardware cloth, you don't have to cut the hardware cloth. You just pop it off like that and connect it. And so just a reminder that uh, the Farmer Brad Do-It-Yourself Kit is available on FarmerBrad.com. Uh, at the timing of this recording, it is $40. Uh, prices may go up in the future uh, due to supply chain issues. Uh, the other thing I wanted to mention too is in this garden hose adapter we have two um, two of these in here. I go ahead and add this extra one in here uh, because some customers may have garden hose spigots that have uh, more threads than others and not so uh, you, you can remove it and just try it with the black one in there. If it's not enough and it doesn't make a good enough connection, go ahead and add this uh, separate gasket right in there. Okay, on to the next part. Uh, we have this bucket lid here, uh, but we need a way to create a vent on the top. And a great way to do that is by, um, now I went to a hardware store and I got this one and a half inch test cap. Uh, it doesn't it doesn't need to be this but uh, but basically you want to cut a little hole in here and this one and a half inch test cap ends up being the right size for getting a, a electrical cord through here with the heated element uh, so what I have to do that just because I have this spaced out exactly right is this device uh, you can uh, have it do various um, sizes of holes there. So I'm going to get this lined up and put it in the middle. A little bit of the table hoopsies okay so I have a hole there and uh, this is a reaming device for just smoothing it out a little bit so I gotta make it a little bit bigger You want it somewhat snug so that it doesn't fly out or fall off during the summer. Okay, a little bit more. Okay, that's snug. And that goes on top of the bucket. Now here's the Farm Innovators 250 watt heated element. It's good for 25 gallons of water. And this one is 250 watts. 
Now they do make a 150 watt one if you can find it, but uh, this is what I was able to find at my local tractor supply store. And this is good because it's uh, safe on plastic. So we'll remove this cap. We'll open the lid. And we'll drop this down in there. Because this is uh, November when I'm filming this video. And uh, in East Central Indiana, getting colder and we're starting to get to the point where things are really freezing we, we just had a decent amount of snowfall the other day okay so um, this cord comes out of here and then here's the metal handle and what you want to do is mount the water nipples the horizontal water nipples to be about head level and so I'm going to uh, also show you that uh, if you have some rope, it's, it's nice to be able to adjust the height of it. Um, so I'm gonna show you, this is how I make like a lark's head knot. And the reason why I like the lark's head knot is because it bites down on the handle. So you don't have to worry about it going from side to side and I, I picked up this rope at uh, tractor supply as well um, I'm not sure if I'll need it because I also uh, purchased this at a local hardware store and this is rated I think for a hundred and twenty five pounds of weight and so um, if I recall correctly each gallon of water weighs about uh, a little over eight pounds uh, so this bracket should definitely hold it um, but I'm not sure if I'll mount this low enough okay now we're gonna move and uh, I'll show you me setting it up in the chicken run let's see if So it looks like I can fish this behind there. That looks like that should be about the right height. So I'm gonna go ahead and screw this in place. go I'm gonna go ahead and place this inside the bucket so I don't lose it now another benefit of putting this hole in the bucket lid is that then that gives you an opening to not have to worry about uh, taking the lid off because uh, manually taking the lid off is, is not fun. So then what I'll do is I'll go ahead and route this 
outside of the chicken run. Then we'll hook it up to the extension cord. And uh, since I'm putting it directly on here, what I'll do is I'll go ahead and bend that a little bit and then that will help keep it more stable. So now I'm gonna open up this cord connect. This has, uh, let's see, has some gaskets in there. So what we end up doing is to help make that watertight seal, put this foam, oh actually, sorry. Feed this through here. You place that there. And let me get let me get the uh, extension cord. So I'll go ahead and plug these together like that. Then you take the other part There you go. You have a nice connection to try to keep the weather out. Okay, so I have the plug plugged in now. Now to fill up the water. So here you can add a funnel and a five gallon bucket to pour in here. Or I recommend a watering can, but unfortunately I can't find mine for the life of me. Okay, I've topped it off. Now I'll go ahead and remove the other chicken waters here. Go ahead and uh, let's place that funnel right there. So it's gotten late enough that the ch chickens are starting to go inside. And uh, so let's say you have a chicken that's never had an opportunity to uh, give these horizontal water chicken uh, nipples a try. So what I recommend doing is taking the leader of the pack and pushing its beak up against it for it to know that this is where water is coming from and then they'll be interested with it. Unfortunately this one uh, knows it's bedtime and so she's wanting to get back to the rest of her flock but um, yeah pretty much you just take their beak and get it wet and remove the other waters and they'll pick up to it right away. If they don't pick up to it, if they don't uh, go to it then uh, maybe put a raisin on here or some other treat that would entice them to entice them to uh, dr drink from the water nipples. Now, I don't recommend these horizontal water nipples for baby chicks. I'd say let them get to five to ten weeks uh, before putting them on to these uh, horizontal water nipples because uh, when they're smaller birds, they may not have enough ability to push in order to uh, get the water out of it. 
but this is a great setup for the winter time. Now this heated element will not cause the water to be really warm. It pretty much turns on when the temperature gets uh, like close, well like I think it turns on at 35 degrees and um, it will just keep the water temperature uh, just above freezing and so um, since this heated element is good for 25 gallons, five gallons is nothing to it. And uh, let's say you have some birds that are different sizes, then what I'd recommend is putting like a wood block so that the smaller ones can hop up and get the water. Um, but yeah, thanks for watching this video. Uh, hopefully that helps you get prepared for winter with your flock here and having a great solution for not only the winter, uh, but also the summer. So remember, during the summer, you can hook it up to a garden hose and it refills automatically. During the winter time, you'll have to manually refill it, but with the heated element, it will keep the water from freezing. And you wanna stay away from those cups style drinkers because those will freeze during the winter time. Make sure to check down in the description of this video and I'll have links to everything to make the heated, chicken water for the winter. Thanks for watching and, and remember, now is a great time to homestead. Until next time, take care.